All right, so we're going to talk about math today. We're going to talk about uh, the first intersection of rectangles, and we'll talk about intersectional line in a rectangle. So there's something called the dividing planes theorem, which means that if you could take a sheet of paper and run it between two rectangles, then they're not overlapping each other, right? If there's any place, if there's any space where you can put something between two objects, they're obviously not overlapping each other. And so this is pretty easy on a uh, box. Basically, you can check the minimum x here is 15. So we've got this guy's minimum x is 15. This guy's maximum x is 13. So if the minimum of 1, if the minimum x of box 2 is greater than the maximum x of box 1, then they do not intersect. Likewise, if you can draw a line between the uh, two on the vertical plane, uh, if the minimum value of y here, in this case it's eight, so it's not, but like if it was up here, if the minimum, if the bottom of this edge is above the maximum of this edge, if the bottom of one is above the top of the other, then they do not intersect. So if the minimum of one is greater than the maximum of the other, they do not intersect. And then you just copy paste, switch the ones and twos, and you're done. That's how easy it is to see if two rectangles intersect, right? And if they pass all four of these tests, minimum, I'll just write them out for you guys, why not? X1 is greater than the maximum of X2. They do not intersect. Or if the minimum Y of this one is bigger than the maximum Y of this one, they do not. And if you get through all four of these tests and they all fail, yes, they intersect. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have a margin? Um, if the points are sorted as maximum and minimum in the same coordinate system, once you only have to do two tests. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's possible for you to optimize this down to two, probably. If if like one of the rectangles is always to the left of the other one, then you don't need to check the other way, right? Same thing if they're sorted bottom to top, you don't have to check the other way because you've already done some sorting you know which one's to the left and which one's to the right. Absolutely. So that is intersection testing. Now, if you want to see if something is completely within one of them, like this, basically, um, let's say that you have a function called inside. So if you have point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, and point 0.4, if all of these are true, P2 and inside P3 and inside P4, and I wrote all the insides except that one, so I might as well come back and do it at this point. Um, then this rectangle is inside of the other rectangle. So how do you tell if a point is inside of another point? So this is uh, here, uh, box intersect. So that's the algorithm for box intersection. It's four lines of code, maybe two, depends how you have it set up. This one is for box uh, inside, I guess you might call it. You wanna see if one box is completely inside another. But in order to do this, we need to do point inside, like how do we know if this point, point one here, how do we know if this point is within this box? Uh, <laughs> how do we know? So this guy, let's say this guy is at 26. How do we know if 26 is inside of a box that goes from 15 to 27, 8? What do you guys think? Uh, no. This is a good brain burner for you guys. It's, uh, it's good for learning also how RTX video cards work. Yeah, so 20 is between 15 and 27, and 6 is between 2 and 8, right? So point inside, it's true if uh, the points x is greater than or equal to the min x, less than or equal to the max x and min y 
is less than or equal to the points y is less than or equal to the max y. So you have a min and a max for the rectangle. Um, rectangles aren't always held that way, but you can always compute them. Um, sometimes you hold it with a center point and the extents. Uh, sometimes you hold just one corner and you have a width and height on it. Three equivalent ways of doing rectangles, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, if your point is between the minimum and maximum x uh, on the x side and the points y is between the minimum and maximum on the y side, c20 is between 15 and 27, 6 is between 2 and 6, then congratulations, your point is inside. If it's not, it's outside. Okay. So it's uh, yeah, a couple of statements, right? Or you can do one long if statement. So that's how you can tell if a point is inside. And then if you want to know if a rectangle is inside, you can just check to see if all four of its points are inside the other guy. If they are, congratulations. The box is completely inside the other box. Now, uh, for RTX on, a big question is line ray, technically, if you want to be <laughs> Raymond. Uh, are you weird for not storing points at all? You're just storing the bounding maximums. You can do that. Like I said, there's multiple ways of storing rectangles. Uh, there's at least three ways that I've done in the past. There's probably more. But the big question for this is, does this line here hit this rectangle? Okay. So we've got a, uh, we've got a line or array technically, because you know, the person might be in the world shooting this way. And we want to know if it hits the rectangle. Okay. So, we've, so norm, mm, let me detour for a second here. So we, so how many different ways can we hold a box? We can call this like box representation. So Raymond, how are you doing it? So you can hold it as min x. Let's see if I can write better. Minimum x, minimum y to Max x. Still not used to this new tablet yet. Maximum x to maximum y. So you can hold it this way. So essentially four floats, four, four doubles. Uh, you can have min x, min y, and size x, size y. So in other words, you hold the bottom left corner and then you say my size to the right is 10, right? Because it goes from 3, 5 to 13. 13 minus 3 is 10. Uh, so it's 10 wide and it is 8 tall, right? So you can hold the bottom left corner and the uh, width and the height. You do that. Another way you can hold it is by holding the center point and then you have the half height you have the half height, which in this case is four, and you have the half width, which is five. And so you have the center point, and you have the half height and the half width, and then you can add and subtract the half height and the half width to get the different edges if you need them. Okay. And so that is the other way that you'll very commonly see it done. So you have the center, the center point, x, the center point, y held and then you have the half x size and the half y size. So, um, center point plus left right edge, center point plus top bottom edge. Yeah. Um, you're starting in a double array x x y y. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all of these, all of these ways of doing it are are fine. You can also store it as the edges, right? You can, which is essentially min x, min y, and max x, max. Those are essentially the four edges of the rectangle. Sure. Okay. Uh, but you can store them as like four separate, you know, like minimum x just held separately. You don't have to hold them as a point, but it's effectively equivalent. Okay. Now, what about line representation? So, line representation. How do you hold a line in code? The way we're doing it in this code, which is not the best way, but it's the way that students are most familiar with, 
how do you like in algebra like how do you describe a line like you got uh you know you got some uh, xy cartesian graph here it's like eighth grade math we're talking about here and let's say the rise over run is one half and the y intercept is two and so for every rise over run is one half so it goes out two then it goes up one the y intercept is two so it looks something like this so the slope is one half and the y intercept is two right so this is slope intercept form right so y is equal to mx plus b and in this case we would hold this as y is equal to one half x plus two okay y intercept is two the slope is one half this is all well and good for algebra but for graphics it's not great uh, there's one type of line that is very common that you can't hold and that line is a vertical line, right? How often do we see vertical lines when we're working with 2D uh, objects? What do you guys think? Like, oh, I don't know, a box that is aligned to the vertical axis. <laughs> axis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> two of the lines on here, we can't represent using slope intercept form. We can only do the horizontal ones. And so, it's kind of a problem, you know, when, when you're using slip intercept form. So in your, in your homework, we use slip intercept form because that's what students know from middle school. It's not actually the best way of representing a line. So representation means like, how do you actually make a class to hold like a line, you know, or how do you make a, a box representation? How do you make a class? What member variables do you have? How do you describe it? You know, and you can describe it as two points. You can describe it as a point in the size. Describe it as a point and a half size. You know, for a line, um, we could just describe it using the m and the b, right? But we have this one small problem where vertical lines can't be represented. So uh, there's different ways of handling that. Um, if the slope is a double, you can do something uh, gnarly, and you can say m is equal to infinity, all right? You can do that, or you can set it equal to nan. So nan stands for not a number. And if the slope is nan, then that means it's vertical and maybe you special case it out, right? Like if you're, if you have code, that's gonna like graph it. Um, you just be like, Hey, if the slope is nan, it's vertical. And then you like switch to a, uh, um, maybe you uh, mirror the, the code so that you do a, uh, you iterate up Y instead of across X or something like that. So I didn't even think of nan, bro. I'm dumb. No, no, it's, it's not a, it's not a normal thing, you know? There are those of us that have flashbacks to Nan, but uh, you haven't taken 45 yet. So you haven't had a, a chance for uh, Nan to get into your brain. It doesn't even work with rise and run. Like for the triangle one, you have to do one formula for steeper than wide and one formula for wider than steep. So there's no skipping exactly. But I'm checking if the slip is negative 999 as an arbitrary vertical line. Yeah, you could, you could do that. It's a magic number, but you could do it. So there's a there's a better way. So this is this is called like slope intercept form, right? And I think I did mine all using slope intercept form and it kind of sucks because there's that special case where y is equal to nan, you know, x plus 2, <laughs> which is not a number and so it breaks everything if you don't special case it out. You have to have an if statement every time you use the slope if the slope is in, okay, we'll do a different block of code and handle vertical lines. So, uh, two points for handling that. I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, you mean the form? Yes. So there is, uh, there is a two, yeah, we can call it two point form, or we can call it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure, we'll call it two point form. That works. So you can have your uh, graph here, and you can have a point here, and you can have a point here, P1 and P2, and these can actually be vertical, it doesn't matter. And this defines a line segment. And so P1 uh, might be at, uh, let's say, 2, 2, and P2 might be at like 10, 10. Let's make math easy. Okay, and so uh, what you can do is you can say the uh, the X and the Y value is equal to 
uh, lerp p1. Yeah, so the capital P. Uh, the lerp of p1 to p2 and t. And so if you punch in, uh, do you guys remember lerping? It's a linear interpolation. So if you like uh, lerp from like 60 to 90 and t, this is like how the thermostat works on your car. If you have it turned all the way down, you get 60 degrees. If you have it turned all the way up, T is one. So T ranges from like zero to one normally. If you have it turned all the way down, if T is zero, you get 60. If you have it turned all the way up, you get 90. And if uh, LERP stands for linear interpolation. Okay. And so um, if you pass on like 0.5, then it's the average of the two. So as T goes from zero to one, like when you turn the dial on your car's thermostat, you'll see it goes 60, 61, 62, 63. Keep turning it and goes all the way up to 90. Okay. So if you pass in, so the equation is essentially uh, 60 times 1 minus T plus 90 times T, I think. Is that right? If you pass in 1, you get 90. If you pass in 0, you get 60. If you pass in 0.5, you get 30 plus 45 is 75 degrees. Yes. So this is this is the LERP equation. Bruce, does that make sense? So if you pass in 0.5, it essentially averages 60 and 90 together. So 60 plus 90 is 150 divided by 275. But if you plug in the equation here, 1 minus t, if t is 0.5, it's 0.5. So 30 plus 0.5 times 90, 30 plus 45, 75 degrees. So as t goes from 0 to 1, 0 is the minimum on the dial, 1 is the maximum on the dial, the temperature that you're going to set in the car smoothly, linearly transitions from 60 to 90. Lerps show up everywhere in video games and in real life too. And, and a lot of the techniques you're learning here in uh, IS50, you will learn, uh, you will use in any uh, program that deals with the real world. And so you can do a two-point form using a LERP. So you can have a point here and a point here, and the points can be above each other. It doesn't matter. So as you go from zero, when t is equal to zero, when t is equal to zero, you get this point here, t2. When t is equal to one, you get point uh, p2, 10, 10. And so, you know, halfway between it, you know, if you want to know the midpoint, that's t is equal to 0.5 here. We'll give you the midpoint, which is going to be 6, 6. And, but here's the cool thing. Like if you go above T is equal to one, well, it'll just keep on going. All right. And if you have T is less than zero, well, it'll keep on going. You know, so you can both define a line segment and a line at the same time. And sometimes you want to know, hey, is the point within the line segment? And then if you, you know, you solve the algebra and if you get a T value of like 0.8, yes, it is between the two points. But a lot of times you just use this to represent a line. And so you just need a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and then that's it. You actually... Don't even need the t to be held because uh, it's a variable, right? It can just range from whatever value to whatever value, and it defines a line. If t is five, it's it's off here somewhere, you know. So, uh, you know, if t is two, it'll be like right here. You guys understand? So, lerp is equal to p one one minus x plus p two times x. That is correct. And so if t is 2, it's up here. If t is like negative 1, it's down here. So. Um, so as t varies, it defines this line. Pretty cool, right? This is, uh, this is uh, a way you can do it if you want. You don't have to. You can use slip intercept form. Um, or you can convert it into two-point form if you want. And then another way you can do it is using uh, parametric form. And so for parametric form, uh, you can say the x and the y values are equal to a starting point, uh, let's say p1, plus the direction. So in this case, the direction is 1, 1, right? We have a rise over run of 1, rise over, oh, it's a tongue twister, rise over run, rise over run of 1. <laughs> uh, slope of 1, right? So for every unit we travel, we go 1 to the right, we go 1 up. Right, the rise is one, the run is 
the rise is one, the run is one. So this is, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, um, A, let's say, times T. Okay. So we have a starting point. This could be the place where the person is shooting the gun. And we have a direction they're looking. Uh, this can be a normalized vector. So if we're looking uh, upright, upright, it could be like 0 0.707, 0 0.707, which is a unit vector pointing northeast directly. And so whatever, uh, you know, we get it 1, 1 and 707, it's essentially the same thing. But usually we work with like a normalized vector. And then T is like how far we go in that direction. So if we have a T of 1, we travel one unit in the direction we're looking. If T is 2, we travel two units in the direction we're looking. If T is 3, we travel three units in the direction we're looking. And so uh, when you solve for T, T is time. This is what you see when you do Unreal Engine. In Unreal Engine, when you do uh, a trace, uh, line trace by channel UE5, it will return out hit. Okay. And out hit, come on, show it to me, show it to me. Break it up, break it up, break it up in. Thank you, there we go, okay. You will see time right there. So when you do the line trace, it's gonna return time. And time seems like a very weird thing to return because it has nothing to do with the actual time of the simulation. So if you've ever wondered why it says time, what that's returning is how far along in parametric terms was uh, the uh, what did the ray did the ray go before it hit something? And so if you have a starting point and an ending point, time is always going to be between zero and one. One is the maximum distance you can hit something. But that's why it's called time. It's how far the bullet traveled between the maximum minimum point before it hit a wall. So if it hit halfway along the line uh, along the distance, uh, t would be set to 0.5. So uh, that that is called time right there. And so you can solve for it. And so like when you plug all these things into the equations, you know, where did I hit the wall? Well, um, you know, 0.5 or something. Okay. But we'll talk about slip intercept form. We have five minutes left before the 50A people come in here. So let's talk about this. How do we tell if a line hit a box? And we can solve this in slip intercept form in the two point. Uh, parameterized form or the parametric form. The math works out either way, but let's let's do this one, okay? So, because I think most of you guys are using slip intercept form. So, it's three, was it five, I think? This one is 13, 13 for triskaidekaphobes. Okay, and then we've got a shot coming in here, and this one will be y is equal to one half x plus two, and we want to see, does this ray hit this rectangle? This is the fundamental thing you have to do an RTX on, okay? So let's, let's figure this out. Uh, there is uh, two only two checks you have to do to see if, uh, well, yeah. Uh, technically, technically, you'll probably want to check all four sides, but you can get away with just checking two of them. Let me, let me show you how this works. So how do we tell if we hit this edge here? How do we how do we check? Well, this is x is equal to three, right? And look at this, we have an x right here, right? So where x is three on the rectangle is the left edge of the rectangle. We can actually plug the three into here and solve for y. So you can say y is equal to three halves plus two, which is equal to one and a half, three and a half. Is three and a half between five and 13? Nope, it is below it. So our line is actually gonna cross down here somewhere, okay? So it is below, it is below the, uh, the rectangle, okay? So it did not cross here, okay? So now we can check uh, y min, y min is equal to five, right? And so we can do the exact same equation, but Instead of knowing what x is, we know what y is. So we can say 5 is equal to 1 half 
x plus 2, subtract it 2 off each side, we get 3 is equal to 1 half x, so x is equal to 6. So at this level here, at y is equal to 5, x is coming in at 6. Is 6 between 3 and 13? Yes. So 3, 4, 5, 6, that ray is hitting us right there. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now, we got a hit. We probably should do the same thing for the other two sides too, because it's often useful to know uh, where the point of impact is. Like when you're playing a video game and you shoot a wall, you want to know, you know, should I draw a puff of smoke here? Or should I draw a puff of smoke here? Right? Because there's two points of intersection we're going to have. Right? Because this ray is going to be coming through like this. Yeah. And so we need to know which one's closer. And sometimes we can know that by like sorting the, you know, the variables and things like that. But um, let's, let's do it on this one. So this is... Uh, What does this line here correspond to? This is x is equal to what? Ooh, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that next. So what is what is the uh, what is the uh, x value here? No is not no 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 is not is not an x value. What is the x value here? Thirteen. Okay. So let's solve for this. Y is equal to one half thirteen plus two. Six and a half plus two is eight and a half. Is eight and a half between y of five and y of thirteen? Yes. And so our shot is coming in here. Yeah. And if the person is standing over here, then this is the closer point. And you can do like Pythagorean uh, distances if you want to know which one's closer. But this is where you're going to draw the uh, bullet decals and things like that. Now, if you're, if you're having a bullet that like punches through something, then, um, you know, you want to know the exit wound spot or something like that. Usually though, bullets in a video game stop when you hit a target. And so that's, that's what you do. So basically you've got an X minimum and X maximum. So you plug in the X minimum and see if the Y that you get is between the Y min and Y max. You then plug in the X maximum and see if the X maximum is between the Y minimum and the Y max. If any of these are true, you've got a hit. Uh, you then do the same for y minimum and see if the x value you get is between x minimum and x maximum. Plug the y max, see if you get the x is between the y x max and x max, x min and x max. And so basically, though, if you get a hit, you're always going to get two hits, right? Because you can't really, oh, that's the eraser, because you can't really draw a line through here without, you know, if you enter it, you have to exit it. It's a solid. Right, so any any solid you enter is always going to have an entry point and an exit point, and so that's why I said like you can actually get away with just testing two of the sides, and if you miss two of the sides, then no, nah, I don't know if you can do that. Maybe not. You, you would have to know which side you're on. Like if the player is over here, then you can only you only have to test the two sides closest to you. You can get away with that if you if you know. Like if, if the player's location is to the left. Of x minimum, you only have to check x minimum. You don't have to check x maximum because there's no way of hitting x maximum without hitting y min or y max if you're below it. Uh, like I said, there's some optimizations. A lot of times, though, you're going to be checking all four sides anyway because you want to know where the bullet comes out. So you just check, test to see if either of the pairs of maxes are intercepted by the ray. Uh, pairs of maxes. So 13, 13 does not intersect. So this point here is not on the line, all right? So if you plug in 13 and 13 here, you don't get true, right? Uh, the only thing that you have to worry about, again, is a vertical line. And if you have a vertical line, then all you test is, so if you have a vertical shot like this, special case, what is my X location? <laughs> if my X location is seven, seven is between three and 13, it's a hit. <laughs> Right, if I'm my Y location, if my starting Y location is below, you know, so you can like special case this, right? You only have to check um, between X min and X max if it's vertical. So. And then horizontal shots, yeah, you can probably do the same thing where um, if Y is equal to eight here, 
all you have to do is check to see is it between y min and y max. You're going to get hit. Okay. So um, that is that is the equation for uh, line box intersection, and it's not it's not too bad. Just if you're using slope interception, slope to intercept form. You just use slope intercept form. You just plug in a value of x and see what y value you get. Is it in? Yes, you hit. You know, you plug the x min, plug the x max, plug the y min in, plug the y, y max in, see if they're in. If all of them miss, you missed. If any of them hit, well, two of them are going to hit. Okay. And then you just have, if it matters to you, you can see which of the two points are closest. You know, is this point closer? Or this point closer, and sometimes you'll know that based on sorting the sorting the points. All right, thanks everybody. Good luck on RTX on. If you need help, I am always available on Discord. Peace.